All right, thanks very much. Um, so this is a collaboration between Boston University and TU Delft, and it's titled Thermal Comfort Design of Personalized Casts. Now, traditional orthopedic casts are typically made from plaster or fiberglass together with a soft inner cotton layer. They often require orthopedic uh, technicians to assist with applying the cast material, and these casts are bulky, they're not water resistant, um, and they have poor breathability. So the skin can become irritated and in worst case scenarios, cutaneous complications can occur. Traditional casts can also make daily tasks uh, very difficult, like taking a shower. So in our work, we introduce 3D printable plastic casts, which are waterproof, ventilated, and lightweight, making them more practical for daily use. Um, and to guide our design, we introduce a novel design objective of thermal comfort. We study the thermal sensitivity distributions of different people, and we customize the cast design for patients' thermal comfort. So our pipeline is illustrated here in this graphic. Um, the input of the system is a scanned 3D model and the thermal images taken by an infrared camera. We first generate the temperature distribution by mapping the thermal images onto the 3D model um, that acquired from the scan. Then the thermal comfort sensitivity is computed to govern the pattern generation where the human thermal comfort is maximized. So considering factors of structural strength, we introduce a hollowed Voronoi tessellation pattern um, that's employed for designing a web-like pattern. After optimizing the pattern for air exposure, a structural enhancement scheme is performed to convert the surface into a non-uniform thickened solid model that ensures mechanical stiffness on the cast. And finally, we 3D print the final result to create the cast. Our work is inspired by a number of startups and designers that have worked on developing personalized 3D printed casts, as shown here. Uh, so for example, in the top image, um, Evil designed a web-like cast named Cortex, where the mesh is denser at the region of bone fracture um, to, to provide support. And Karasahin created a similar cast equipped with a low-intensity pulsed ultrasound bone simulator system. Um, researchers have also worked on predicting the mechanical performance of 3D printed casts by using finite element analysis. However, these existing approaches involve heavy manual editing of 3D models, which is time consuming and requires experienced CAD engineers. So while these related methods um, design 3D printed casts with customized shapes and ensure mechanical stiffness, um, we think about uh, the addition of thermal sensitivity variation at different regions of a human body and maximize that thermal comfort. So thermal comfort as a sensation um, describes how people feel about the thermal state of the body, and researchers have found that the distribution of thermal sensitivity changes from person to person. So as an example here, um, we're showing two different individuals in two different environments, and you can see that as an indication that the temperature distribution is unique in each of those. Um, so this thermal comfort can be improved by customizing the air exposure of skin in regions with high thermal sensitivity, um, so with this in mind, our work proposes a new computational approach to design a cast customized in terms of the shape, the mechanical stiffness, and uh, the thermal comfort. Um, so the question is, how do we actually get this uh, thermal state of the human body? So we start by 3D scanning the fractured region of the human body. And once we have that 3D scan shape, we capture thermal images using an infrared camera. And these are two-dimensional images, um, which are then mapped onto the 3D model to generate those temperature distributions in 3D. Uh, now, thermal comfort is usually evaluated in a perceptual manner. Uh, so a widely used method is to collect ratings from subjects uh, about their satisfaction under different environmental temperatures. For example, um, I'm showing a summary of Zhang et al.'s work um, where they give a numerical scale um, from very uncomfortable to very comfortable, and then they developed a mathematical model to predict people's thermal comfort responses um, to temperature changes uh, by a set of experiments. So this is experiment generally, uh, the subjects had their local skin temperature changed and measured, like by a measurable amount, and then they were surveyed repeatedly for their comfort level and a mathematical model and its coefficients were derived um, by regression of the skin temperature and the thermal comfort vote that was ex uh, obtained in the experiments. Um, so here you have that measure um, C of X 
which is uh, a, a shifted and scaled uh, sigmoid uh, as a function of the temperature change and also a body coefficient. So that coefficient would change depending on what part of the body. In our application, to obtain that thermal comfort distribution, two temperature distributions are measured on the human body. One is on bare skin, so that's uh, the initial condition, and that's when the human body just feels neutral. And then the other is on fully covered skin. So here we wrap a plastic film around the local body part for 30 minutes, and then under the same environmental temperature, the thermal images are captured immediately after uncovering that plastic film. So using these two temperature distributions, the initial conditions, and then after having the, the wrapped body part, um, we can compute that thermal comfort sensitivity. Now our optimization algorithm is formulated as minimizing a total energy that is composed of a pattern control term, that's EP, and a thermal term, ET. And the design of our pattern is based on the concept of honeycomb cell structures. And we use these because honeycombs um, are distinct in having good mechanical properties, um, as well as being pretty lightweight. So we utilize a centroidal Voronoi tessellation to generate um, the uniform honeycomb-like cell distribution. So that's for the pattern control term. And then we perform a hollowing in each of the Voronoi cells to construct the pattern of the cast. In addition to the pattern control, then we have a thermal term, and that's added to maximize the thermal comfort. Um, our system generates patterns with more air exposure at thermally sensitive regions. Um, so here in this image, the, the red is showing a higher thermal sensitivity. And so you want to have an adaptive cell distribution that allows more exposure in those regions. This thermal term measures performance as the amount of skin that is covered in the sensitive regions. And we integrate the sensitivity metric over the solid parts of the cast, which are the Voronoi cell edges. Um, the goal is to have less coverage of skin where the sensitive sensitivity is higher. And we formulate the problem as an optimization which changes that distribution and size of the Voronoi cells. Um, lastly, we provide a contrast coefficient to weight the pattern control term and the thermal term and that's given by lambda. And the users can adjust this parameter to control the pattern distribution according to their preference. So in this example, going from left to right, the lambda term is increasing and that puts more weight on the thermal comfort term. Now after the pattern generation is complete, the next stage of the pipeline is the structural enhancement. And casts require, obviously, a certain stiffness to support the fractured bones. Uh, and a goal of the structural enhancement is that this thickening process should not change the pattern that we just spent all this time optimizing for thermal comfort. So we introduce a bidirectional strategy to accomplish this. While the thermal comfort is optimized in the surface of the model, so that's in plane, um, for stiffening, we extrude the model on the direction orthogonal to the surface. So in this way, both the criteria on thermal comfort and mechanical stiffness can be satisfied without interfering with each other. Now, we perform finite element analysis and three-point bending tests to calculate the stiffness distribution. We used a PLA material properties. And then to perform the structural test, um, we fix the two extreme sides um, as the boundary conditions. And then we apply a force at mid-span on the cast. Then to enhance the stiffness while preserving the material, we use the finite element analysis results to iteratively determine a non-uniformly distributed thickness. So first, we begin with a uniform thickened cast. We obtain that stress distribution, and that's shown here with the color coding. And then we thicken the regions with the large stress until at maximal stress in the solid model is less than a critical threshold. All right, so we're starting here with a uniform thickness of four millimeters. Um, then when we take, say, one iterative step, um, we have a varying thickness now from four to five millimeters, and you can see that that stress distribution has uh, lowered the maximum. And then take another step, and we have now a variation in thickness of four to six millimeters, and uh, you can see lower stress overall, and the, the maximum is now below what our, our threshold was set to. So this progressive structural enhancement reduces the maximal stress on the cast. Um, and now for comparison, I'm showing um, on the bottom row, this is a stress distribution for a cast with a regular uniform thickness. 
Um, for a, a fair comparison, it has the same total weight, meaning the same total material consumption as the optimized cast um, with uh, non-uniform thickness. And so you can see in comparing those two stress distributions, the max is definitely higher um, in the non-optimized version. We tested our casts on different body parts of four individuals, and we're showing here some typical daily use scenarios. And our experimental results were encouraging. We observed improved thermal, uh, thermal properties in our experiments, and we also had positive user feedback. So I'll just review a bit of that. To verify that our casts are thermally comfortable, we compared the skin temperature after wearing the casts in contrast to a uniform, uh, uniform uh, pattern. So for instance, we have this wrist cast, and the experiment was done in an office room. Um, so uh, the room temperature was raised while wearing the cast, and the participant wore each cast version for 30 minutes. And then we took these thermal images immediately after removing the cast. And to, again, to conduct a fair comparison, the uniform cast has the same area of air exposure compared to the optimized version. Um, and here, the uniformly sparse casts were generated using the traditional centroidal Voronoi tessellation. Um, so you can see um, on the left is the initial condition. On the right is after wearing the cast for 30 minutes. And the skin temperature um, is shown to be lower for our optimized version. This experiment was taken um, in a different environment. Um, for this arm cast, um, the user was in a sauna. Um, and here is the thermal results. So again, you can see the lower temperatures um, for the optimized version if you're looking at the, the final result. Here we had another experiment um, for a net cast. And we observed, again, a lower temperature distribution. And that's due to the ventilation given by our optimized casts. And this was true throughout all of our experiments. And in this fourth and last experiment, we tested a leg cast. And this was, again, in an office environment. And here you see the lower temperature looking at that right side on the uh, final conditions after the raised temperature for 30 minutes. Um, so again, this optimized ventilation um, given by our optimized cast gave a better result for the final temperature. Um, just another look at how we did the quantitative comparison between the temperature differences on the skin. Um, we sampled the thermal images and uh, compared the histograms of temperature distribution. Um, so here, the red bars represent uh, the uniform cast, the yellow bars are our optimized cast, and the orange is just the overlap. Um, so you can see quite clearly with this visualization that the optimized casts are consistently uh, a lower temperature distribution compared to the uniform. Uh, we con conducted mechanical tests as well on both the uniform and optimized cast. Um, so in this case, when I say uniform, I mean in the thickness, right? So we have a uniform thickness cast versus the variable thickness cast. Um, so ours was between 4 and 6 millimeters, and uh, the uniform was at 4.4 uh, millimeters uh, uniformly. Um, so this means that the, uh, this was chosen so that the total material would be the same. Um, and so you can see in this forced displacement curve, um, our optimized version is much steeper, which just means that you need uh, a higher force to get the same displacement, right? So we had better mechanical stiffness um, for our version. Um, we also collected feedback on the experience from the participants. Um, so we, we uh, asked all the participants that were shown wearing the casts um, in those, those four examples. And all the participants were asked to rate their experience on different aspects while wearing um, first a fiberglass cast, then the uniformly sparse cast, and then our optimized version. Um, and the responses were just set on a 10-point scale regarding um, five different qualities, um, the weight, the appearance, thermal comfort, tactility, and, fa and uh, facility. And facility was an overall assessment of, of how usable they thought the cast would be. Um, so just going through each of those, um, for uh, the thermal comfort, which is being highlighted here, uh, this was our main goal. And, and we were happy to see that the optimized cast did, in all cases, uh, get the highest rating. Um, so that's the blue bar in this case. Um, and this one is showing uh, the uh, lightweight and feasibility for daily usage, so the facility. Um, and in this case, um, all participants agreed that uh, 
the 3D printed casts were superior, but you can see that it didn't really matter whether it was optimized or non-optimized, just the, uh, the 3D printed casts at all were, were better than the fiberglass. And then 3D printed casts in general received a lower score on tactility and appearance. Um, so these scores could potentially be boosted by adopting a more skin-friendly material. So with fiberglass casts, typically you don't just have a single material, you have a, a cotton layer that's on the inside to give sort of a softness to the skin, and that was not true for the 3D printed casts. Um, so if we added multi-materials, potentially we could improve on that. Okay. Um, then we conducted an interview with an orthopedic surgeon. Um, and the doctor agreed that our cast showed great promise on thermal comfort together with making a custom fit based on 3D scanning. And uh, there were three challenges uh, that were foreseen by the doctor. Uh, first, the, the main concern was that a patient cannot always attain a particular pose for 3D scanning. Um, so if you're injured and in pain, you won't, you won't necessarily be able to have the flexibility to hold your arm in a useful way uh, just to, to get the geometry acquisition. Um, second, the current printing materials, um, as mentioned, have this unsatisfactory tactile comfort, um, which could be improved by using a softer material. And furthermore, um, he noted that um, so some post-processing would probably be necessary. Um, for example, there can be ridges on, uh, on the edges uh, just from sort of a rough surface. All right. So that's a review of uh, the work on thermal casts. I'll just acknowledge some of our funding sources. And thank you for your attention. We have time for any questions. Um, I just have a quick question. When you're doing the initial scan, um, the person was in sort of a rest state. Yeah. Um, would you imagine a different result if they were sort of in a more active state? Would their profile be different? So for example, if you wanted to cast for when a person is jogging, uh, that's a more intensive activity. Do you have different hot spots? Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. So in order to get the sensitivity in the first place, we sort of assumed that the initial conditions were neutral. Um, but, but certainly that could be the case. And if you already have the injury, then that can affect the blood circulation. And so that, that would definitely be a challenge um, right. to make it in practice. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, let's uh, thank Emily once again.